Train the muscles, not the joints. Welcome back to Natural Goland Bodybuilding Mountain. And today I'm going to talk to you about my favorite way to train. And uh, yeah, I'm wearing some new shoes today. Usually I'm wearing uh, just, just, just FYI, you know, for you guys that want to know. Because uh, some of you guys ask me what type of equipment I use as far as shoes or pants or whatever. Sometimes you guys are asking me these questions. I, I usually wear Adidas like skate shoes. Uh, not like skate shoes. I sound like a skater now. Like almost like a surfer dude. Like I usually like like wear skate shoes. No, usually I'm wearing skate shoes of some sort because they're flat. And I know that some people that are talking about squats and, and you know, guys like Tom Platts and stuff are always saying, oh yeah, put a heel in the shoe and, and put the knees over the toes and therefore you stay more straight up and down. Uh, that, that crap would massacre my knees. I find that that's actually not, not good advice for most people. I find most people should be pushing through the middle of the foot, not letting the knees travel way over the toes when it comes down to squats and stuff. But uh, yeah, so don't be surprised if that technique or heels in the shoes start irritating your knees, that that can uh, cause a problem because that happened to me like back in the day when I was using Nike Airs. You know, do you remember the Nike Airs? You know, they had a, the, almost like a heel and it was like a running shoe. And I wasn't really too discerning in what type of shoe I was wearing and then I'd squat and then I noticed, hey, my knees feel kind of weird after. And a lot of times it's because they had a heel in them. And of course, uh, you know, to make it doubly, uh, doubly or twice as bad, the, the heel was also unstable because of the cushion softness, right? So I blew out a few of them, you know, just, just popped the airbag in the shoes and stuff. So yeah, anyway, I like the flat bottom shoes. So yeah, right now I'm wearing some other shoes. I got online, I'm just testing them out. Uh, I'm not sponsored by the company or anything like that, but they're, they're called Pilates shoes or whatever. So uh, they're, they're kind of made of suede and leather and all this stuff. They're kind of cool. They're for driving fancy cars and stuff. So I'm thinking if I wear the shoes, then maybe I'll get a fancy car. So if you, one of you guys wants to send me like a Porsche or something like that, like feel free. I'll just give you my PO box and you can just like deliver the, the supercar right to me. So yeah, on that note, uh, what I wanted to talk about is my favorite way to train is to meet the weights often, frequently, and vary the intensities, not just in weight, but also vary the intensities when it comes down to effort. So a lot of times what I'll find is that I'll, I'll hit these slumps. Maybe it's just because I'm an old man now. I don't know what it is, but sometimes I'll hit a slump where it's almost like the muscles feel flat or I feel out of breath or I'm just not necessarily feeling uh, super motivated to crush massively heavy weights. But I notice that if I meet the gym continually doing easier workouts, then eventually that massive fire of passion towards lifting heavier weights and so forth just automatically manifests itself in the workout, you know, assuming that I'm eating properly and, and, and so forth, right, and sleeping. Uh, but the fact is, is that this is why I promote more of a higher frequency, regular type of training. And I'd, in a lot of cases, I'd rather see a lot of people, you know, use next to, you know, no volume or really low volume and visit the gym more often just to keep you know, everything greased in your system, you know, kind of like the wheels greased on a train or, or, a, or, you know, all the moving parts in an engine in a car, you know, when it's at idle, it's, it's getting greased and grooved and, you know, the water is pumping and all the rest of it, right? So it's usually when a car is sitting in the garage for a long period of time and not running, that's when you start it up and you usually get problems, right? So I, I find it's the same thing with the body. Like it's, it's okay to have workouts that are more like my bliss building workout. And, uh, you know, workouts that are just not quite as intense, but they're you just moving through the motions and making sure everything is firing properly and it's all lubricated and so forth and the blood flow is going there. And then, of course, as you work through these workouts, they act like glorified warm ups for those days that you can really manifest the intensity. And you may notice that you can manifest that intensity more often than you think. So because of this, I find that higher frequency type of training tends to be my favorite way to train. Now that doesn't mean that uh, there's, there's nothing to the higher volume approach where people are doing bro splits or three day splits or whatever. And, uh, and I do promote three day splits on my website for that reason, because they, they do work. Uh, it, you know, it's, it, as long as you're manifesting effort and you're hitting exhaustion in the muscles, there's going to be some sort of positive adaptation in the body. You know, so we, we could just argue about the semantics about what is the most efficient for you, but definitely one piece of that picture is what gets you to show up more regularly, what motivates you to stick to a, a good eating plan instead of just eating garbage and, and randomly just, uh, you know, rolling out of bed with a, with a bag of chips stuck in your hair. You know what I mean? So, 
it's, it's a matter of motivation plays a factor. And, and then at the same time, I find that uh, some people, when they take massive days off, like seven, eight, nine days off, and then they go into the gym and then they go from zero to a hundred, they tend to injure themselves. You know, they're doing one rep maxes after not training for nine or 10 days. And then of course, that's when the muscle tears and everything happen because the body's not prepared for it. So a lot of times your workouts are glorified preparations for the more intense workouts. And I think that people would be uh, much further ahead in their training and have way less injuries and more results if they treated some workouts almost like glorified warmups so that way they can manifest that intensity safely into you know, the heavier weight type workouts or uh, workouts where they have to you know, push uh, deeper into failure, right? So not every workout has to be a failure workout not every workout has to be an intense workout that you see on, a, on the cover of a magazine or you know some sort of documentary of a pro bodybuilder uh, the truth is is that a lot of the workouts can be pumping easy kind of just getting the flow going through the body and then from there you start to notice that the manifestation of that enthusiasm and that passion and that fire naturally comes to you and it's 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 more of an organic process instead of you trying to force it through the mind like we all know those guys that are like ramping themselves up on pre-workouts and massive amounts of caffeine and all this to force themselves to constantly manifest intensity. But maybe, and I'm not saying this, you know, uh, you know, as a, as a blanket statement, but maybe there are times the body doesn't want to move in, in a really intense way. There might be a reason for that. You know what I'm saying? So assuming that you're not just a lazy person in the mind and all that, uh, if we're just listening to the body, there are times that the body needs to move in a gentler way instead of constant ferocity. So don't feel bad if you're one of these people that, um, that are like me, where you manifest intensity when you have it, but then there are workouts that you do a little bit easier. And then from there, uh, you start to have this, uh, let's just say, I keep hearing something behind me. I'm not joking. There's actually some thumping and Like I said, tell me if something's behind me. Just that, that's all I'm saying. Just tell me, and then uh, you know, then I can quit the video. And yes, when I'm running, you will see intensity. You will see a lot of intensity when I'm running. There's there's a lot of shit back there. Just so you know, there's a lot of shit back there. So yeah, what I'm saying is that don't feel bad if you have lower intensity workouts and then you manifest these massively awesome, great workouts. Sometimes it's the low intensity workouts and the easier workouts that assist you with being able to have those explosive type workouts as well. So it's like this synergy that goes on, this synergy that takes place in a workout program. It's not always about, you know, absolute, you know, power and then absolute rest. My ass is on fire. I find that I adapt way better if I ease myself into adaptation and ease myself into higher amounts of effort. And then when I start to feel a little bit burned out, maybe I take a day off or so, and then I'll come back and then I'll ease myself into it again. I don't necessarily just, you know, hit it 100% or, or do 100% intensities right off the bat, right? So you'll see me using 225 on the bench when I can easily use 275, 295. And then there's reasons why. And sometimes I'll use 185 and just go through the motions. So the well-being of the workout can drive results. That's really my point you following that compass of well-being during your workouts can lead you to greater results and greater recovery and less injuries and that's really what we're here for especially if you want to work out you know in your 40s 50s 60s 70s you want to keep working out that's really what you want to use as your compass not necessarily just how many reps in the tank that i get with a certain weight as much as that looks glamorous and, and so forth it's it's not necessarily the way that you'll find sustainable over the long run mountain so yeah, I hope this helps you out in your training. Thanks a lot for watching. Thanks a lot for watching. Because there's something back there watching, seriously. Something. I don't know what, but something. And yeah, if you haven't tuned into the podcast yet, I do that every single week. You can uh, find the link in the description. It's right here, right? Okay, this is like the podcast on Patreon. And I do a podcast every week where I answer your questions. You guys just DM me questions and I answer them in a podcast and, uh, and try to help you out in whatever way I can. I hope this helps you out and take care for now. All right, guys, if you're going to troll my uh, videos or whatever, then at least buy an exercise stick, huh? And if you buy an exercise stick, it won't be quite so disturbing. How about a rock? Hey, maybe a rock?
different controls. I'm always getting trolled by the Sasquatches. That's the thing, it's, it's a rough life.